As a dermatologist, if there was one skincare product that I could click my fingers and make everybody in the world use in their skincare routines, it would be a retinoid. Don't get me wrong, we all love a good moisturizer, and would I even be a dermatologist if I wasn't obsessed with recommending SPF sunscreen? But even with that being said, the retinoid would still be top of my list. Why do I say that, and more importantly, why are you not using one yet? When you watch all the way through to the end of this video, I guarantee you that I would have persuaded you to give this ingredient a try. I'm also gonna give you my specific retinoid product recommendations at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for those. My name's Dr. Sayed, AKA Real Skin Doctor, and I'm a medical doctor specializing in dermatology who's based in New York City. For those of you new to the channel, it's my aim to guide you through the confusing and crazy world of dermatology and skincare using some real scientific evidence. If you've had enough of watching morning skincare routines from people who have no idea what they're doing, then subscribe to the channel for a voice you can trust on skincare. I always like to give my viewers information here using real life stories from my own clinical experience because I think that's the best way of communicating information in a way that makes it easiest to relate to. So I'm gonna tell you about my patient, we'll call her Agatha, who came to see me asking about retinoids. Broadly speaking, the video is gonna follow the structure you see here in the timestamps. So if you're really keen to get ahead to one specific part, feel free. Otherwise, kick back and join me in the clinic. So Agatha comes into the clinic one day and says, I have to say it. You're looking good today. I know, Agatha. Let's, let's get to the point. She says, okay, Dr. Said, I've been hearing so much about these products called retinoids. Every beauty blogger, everything I see online is talking about retinoid, retinoid, retinoid. What are these things and should I be using them in my skincare routine? Broadly speaking, retinoids is actually an umbrella term given to a series of compounds that are either derived from or related to vitamin A. I can't believe I just said vitamin. I've said vitamin my entire life been in America for four years and now it's vitamin A. So retinoids can include, for example, retinols, which is the alcohol version, retinols, which are aldehydes, or retinoic acids, which are acids. The reason you're more likely to have heard of retinols more so than retinols or retinoic acids is because retinols are the alcohol version, which are slightly weaker and which are commonly found in over-the-counter products and aren't restricted by prescriptions. Almost any beauty brand you can think of will have a retinol containing product somewhere in their lineup. Retinoic acids, for example, are often stronger and tend to be prescription only in most countries. Retinoids are actually a very well-studied compound and we know down to the nuclear level exactly how they affect our skin. Firstly, anti-wrinkle. We know that when retinoids bind to specific types of retinoid receptors in the nucleus, they promote the formation of more collagen and elastic fibers in our skin. Collagen and elastic fibers are what make our skin look plump and firm. And on the flip side, loss of collagen and elastic fibers with age is what leads to our skin sagging and therefore us having wrinkles. Now I know everything in the world claims to be anti-wrinkle, but retinoids truly are anti-wrinkle and we have scientific proof for it. The investigators took one group of patients and gave them topical retinoids to use on their skin and took another group of patients and gave them a placebo, which is basically just a moisturizer cream of some kind which didn't have a topical retinoid in there. They took biopsies, meaning small samples of skin from both groups at the beginning of the research paper. And then a couple of months in, they took repeat biopsies of the same areas of skin took those little samples of tissue and stained them using some special inks to identify the collagen fibers in each sample. You can see in this research paper as well as many others that there is clearly undeniably more collagen fibers in the group which use retinoid products as compared to those which use a placebo. So this is evidence-based anti-wrinkle, anti-aging effect. Show me any of these mumbo jumbo, seaweed, mineral, jojoba, avocado, cumin products, any of those that can show me similar effects on biopsy proven samples. They will not be able to show you that same evidence. Next, let's talk about pigmentation, a problem which I talk about in some of my other videos. We can get hyperpigmentation or dark patches from a bunch of different causes, mainly things like inflammation or things like melasma. In each case, there are collections of melanin granules, which are the pigment in our skin, and they're clustered together causing these dark patches. What retinoids do is they actually cause dispersion of these pigment packets, meaning that over time you notice that the dark patch seems to fade away. Retinoids also encourage cell differentiation and cell turnover, which means that you get an overall exfoliating effect continuously when you use topical retinoids without having to use these aggressive physical scrubs that can actually do more harm than good. One of the most common types of patients that I normally prescribe or recommend retinoid products for is my acne patients. Sebum is the name of the oil created by the glands in our skin. When we produce too much sebum or if it's too thick, this can lead to blackheads, whiteheads and generally acne breakout. Retinoids reduce sebum production, which is just one of the ways it's actually really helpful for fighting acne. Finally, the anti-skin cancer effect. So anybody who studied cancer in science lessons in the past will probably remember the overall concept of cancer being that a cell 
doesn't differentiate the way it's supposed to and it ends up becoming a clone that rapidly expands. Retinoids actually encourage differentiation of cells and also cause cell death to early skin cancer cells. So let me get this straight. There's an ingredient out there that is anti-wrinkle, helps with dark spots, prevents acne flares, rejuvenates your skin and treats skin cancer and you're not using it yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do with you guys. Okay, this all sounds amazing, but there has to be a catch, right? Otherwise, the government should just be putting this into all of our water. And you're right, there are certainly some downsides, and there's a very good reason why the government isn't putting this in all of our water. We're gonna focus on the downsides of topical retinoids right now. By far, far, far and away, the most common downside of using a topical retinoid is dryness and irritation. This is also the main reason why a bunch of my patients end up stopping using retinoids. I'm gonna show you later in this video exactly how you should be using your retinoid products to help minimize these kind of effects, but retinoids do dry the skin. As I mentioned earlier, they reduce oil production in the skin, Therefore, it's no surprise that you end up with drier feeling skin afterwards. They also increase skin turnover, which means that when you start using them, you'll notice the peeling effects almost straight away. This is especially a problem if you're someone who has dry skin, and it's also most noticeable if you use the retinoids too close to your under eyes or in your folds between your nose and your cheeks because those areas are more sensitive. The other really important downside to bear in mind when talking about retinoids is that you absolutely should not be using them if you are pregnant. For anyone who's been on Accutane before and if you're a female, you know that we have to test you for pregnancy a billion times while you're on it. We have to test you twice before you're allowed to start it and we have to bring you into the office every month to get tested for a negative pregnancy test because it really is that damaging to a potential baby if you were to get pregnant on Accutane. It can cause problems with the baby's brain, eyes and limb development as well as many other things and ultimately it just absolutely must be avoided. We know all of these side effects for a fact when it comes to the tablet versions of the retinoids and because of that it's important to even avoid the cream versions because there is always some degree of systemic absorption when we apply things to our skin. It's not clear cut that retinoid creams will also cause these kinds of effects but we really don't want anybody running this kind of experiment by themselves because the downsides really are so damaging. So yes do not use any form of tablet or cream version of retinoid while you are pregnant. When it comes to the benefits of anti-wrinkle effect, helping with pigmentation, helping minimize acne, you start to notice all of these things by around about four weeks and onwards. When it comes to the dryness, flavor, and irritation, you'll probably notice that by day two. So there's a little bit of a disconnect here, which means that you really have to slug it through the hard times in the first couple of weeks before you'll notice any of the benefits. But just remember Real Skin Doctor telling you that right now and make sure to persevere because the benefits will be worth it for you. And this is something I mentally prepare all of my patients for. I said, Agatha, listen to me. You are gonna wanna stop this after one or two weeks because you're not gonna notice an improvement and you're gonna think it's irritating and you're gonna think you have an allergy to it or something like that, but you have to persevere because everyone goes through this phase and in the long term, it is worth it. So let me give you the tips that I gave to Agatha and to all my other patients whenever we talk about topical retinoids. The first principle, start low and go slow. You're gonna hear me repeat this motto in a lot of videos, especially when we're talking about different cosmetic treatments like chemical peels, filler, Botox, lasers. The key thing when it comes to perfecting your skin is that it's a marathon not a sprint. If you're impatient and you try and do everything quickly you can end up having really negative side effects which will put you off things or even cause lasting damage to your skin. So start low and go slow even with your retinoids. So when you're first starting out a retinoid product I actually want you in the first week to only use it every other night. That's the first part of starting low is that you're not even going to use it every night to begin with. In terms of the amount you're going to use it's going to be the size of a green pea on your finger for your entire face. Now most people, myself included, when I first started using retinoids, I put on a green pea sized amount and I was like, come on, you gotta be kidding me. A green pea for the whole face? Let me put a green pea here and a green pea here and a green pea on my forehead, I got a big forehead. So I did that and then the next morning I woke up peeling like a snake. The corners of my nose were peeling off, my face was red and felt tight. I had overdosed on a retinoid product. Now that I've told you that, you don't need to make the same mistake. So yes, truly stick to that, a green pea sized amount for your entire face. The next thing is, I want you to mix it with a moisturizer before you apply it to your face. This is an area of some controversy online with people always asking, can I apply both a moisturizer and a retinoid? Is it gonna affect the way it works? Luckily for everyone, scientific studies have been done into this and have shown that mixing a retinoid with moisturizer does not reduce its effect and it does reduce the side effects, meaning the dryness and irritation. So I want you to take your favorite moisturizer that you use on your face, for me that's CeraVe Moisturizing Lotion, and I want you to put both the retinoid in your hand and then the CeraVe Moisturizing Lotion in there as well and to just mix it together. You can then apply that combination through your entire face, avoiding the area immediately under your eyes. You wanna spread it as a thin film on your 
your entire face and you don't want to rub it in aggressively until it's all disappeared because chances are you've wiped most of that off with your hand. I recommend doing all of this as a bedtime routine and the reason for that is that depending on the retinoid product you're using, some of them are actually inactivated by sunlight, meaning that if you put it on first thing in the morning and walked outside, depending on the product you're using, it could inactivate the ingredient, meaning you're not gonna get the beneficial effect. So I recommend not taking the chance with whichever product you're using and just making it a habit to apply it at bedtime. The next piece of advice, I think it's really important when you're using a topical retinoid already to think carefully about what other products you're planning to put on your face. I strongly recommend avoiding things like a salicylic acid or a benzoyl peroxide being used at the same exact time that you put on the retinoid. The reason is twofold. One, some retinoid products again are inactivated by certain acidic products like benzoyl peroxide, and so you don't wanna be using those at the same time just in case it's inactivating your retinoid. Secondly, even if you're using something which is stable for use along with benzoyl peroxide, Using it at the same time is really likely to enhance the irritating and drying effect. So if you are going to use either of those things, benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid, make sure you're using them only in the morning, and then I recommend using the retinoid product at bedtime. If you're using a gentle facial cleanser of some kind, do that first before you apply your retinoid, obviously, because otherwise you will just wash off your retinoid. The next thing is, even though we're mixing the retinoid with the moisturizer when we're applying it, it's important to use that moisturizer throughout the day. So make sure you're also moisturizing in the morning and midway through your day because the retinoids are going to dry out your skin and you're more likely to continue using them regularly if you've built moisturizers into your schedule. After one week of applying it every other night like this, if you haven't had any really bad drying or peeling, then it's safe for you to increase it to once per night. Continue with this, have faith and know that you have to carry on for at least four weeks before you're likely to see any of the beneficial effects. So you're in this for the long haul. If you're using this for a specific purpose like acne, then try it out for at least two months. And if at that point you've noticed no difference in the frequency of your acne outbreaks, go back to your dermatologist and they can increase the strength of the retinoid product you're using. Chances are you're gonna be starting with an over-the-counter cosmetic product which contains retinol. As I mentioned, retinol is weaker, but they do still work. And this study, for example, shows that retinols perform better than placebos, but it also shows that retinoic acid products perform even better than retinols do because they have a stronger effect. Your dermatologist can guide you through the ladder of exactly the strength of retinoid products you're using and what might be best for you next, but I just wanna let you know that those options do exist. Those of you who've watched my top over-the-counter product recommendations, which I hope is all of you, right, will know that my top recommendation in the retinoid categories is Differin Gel. Now, why is that? It's because it contains something called Adapalene 0.1%, which is a third generation retinoid, which has been proven to be effective in a lot of the ways I mentioned earlier, as well as being much better tolerated than some other retinoids, meaning that it's known to cause less irritation, redness, and peeling. The best part for me is that it's so easily accessible and so reasonably priced. You can get it at most drugstores and you can also buy it on things like Target Online or Amazon. You can get an amount that will last you one or two months for around about 10 to $15, which is amazing value. Now, if you're a a bit fancy and you don't like things that look more medical or basic like those drugstore products, there's also a La Roche-Posay version of the Adapalene, which I also find to be really effective and popular amongst my patients. And finally, there's this Neutrogena Retinol product, which is the alcohol version of a retinoid, a little bit more gentle, and it combines it in a really hydrating base because it has hyaluronic acid in there. So it means that it's really nice and gentle for people who are new to retinoid products. I have provided links for every product I talk about in this video in the description below, but don't get too bogged down into the specifics of each of these products find one that's easy and accessible for you. I would prioritize reputable companies that know how to make a safe product rather than these kind of small mom and pop startups where you don't really know if they're being regulated in the way that you would want. The next thing I'd do after finding this reputable company is I'd find one that has a price point that I can live with and then I'll just go with that one and try it out. So this just leaves the question. Did I persuade you to add a retinoid into your skincare routine? If you're a new believer based on this video, please comment below saying hallelujah so I know that my preaching is working. Check out these other videos on my channel so you can carry on your journey to becoming a true skincare expert. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.